more than a thousand years ago, there came to the highlands of East Central Africa the Watusi, a giant race who conquered the agricultural natives of the region now known as Rwanda. Today, still ruling over two million subjects who inhabit the rolling hills, the Watusi live in neat houses of clay and thatched straw. The family of Prince Muikarago are preparing for breakfast. One of their many Wahutu servants has brought water with young palm leaves for hand towels. Other servants on containers of food prepared in the nearby kitchen. Food by the Wahutu farmers, peas, bananas, all in clean wooden containers ready for serving. Members of the family are seated behind a low clay platform which on occasion serves as a fireplace. The refined features of Prince Muikarago bespeak his noble lineage as he chats with his son, Prince Kanamugiri, while Princess Mukaratesi attends her little daughter. Using the fireplace as a serving table, the servant places in wooden bowls for each member of the family the boiled rice, beans, peas, and bananas sliced with a bamboo knife. The little princess prefers bananas, fresh gathered from nearby gardens. Intimate relationship exists between father and son. The young prince will someday inherit the family properties, farmlands, servants, and cattle, in line with age-old practice among Watusi nobility. Today, with breakfast over, father and son are going out to inspect their cattle. It is only when the prince rises that we appreciate his height, more take leave of the prince's mother. They pass out of the thatched house, and, after farewell, out through a gate in the stockade which encloses the buildings. With her young daughter at her side, the princess takes up a morning activity, the weaving of an ornamental wall mat. This is made of reeds and grasses dyed in various colors. Such geometrical designs are characteristic of Watusi orientation of walls and clothing. Since cattle play such a prominent part in Watusi life, it is natural that the young prince's clay toys should represent the royal cows. This servant girl, the personal attendant of the mother, now requests that she inspect the broad trays of coffee drying in the sun, another feature of household routine and a part of the education of the young daughter. And then on to oversee the churning. The Watusi depend for their food chiefly upon dairy products, milk, curds, and butter. The churns are jugs of cleverly carved wood, scrupulously clean, and covered by cones of closely woven grasses. Meanwhile, Prince Muikarago and his son are inspecting one of the treasured royal herds. Cows with huge horns, often measuring 10 feet from tip to tip. The head herdsman has called attention to an ailing animal. The prince sends his son off to play with some comrades before he begins the incantations which are calculated to restore the cow to health. In company with other lads of the nobility, Prince Kanamogiri plays the game of Igoroso, much like backgammon, more familiar to us. This game is played only by members of the nobility. There comes a sudden interruption. A young messenger, hurrying in, announces that a leopard has been sighted lurking among the trees near the royal cattle. The father must be warned at once. The young prince is to summon bowmen and spearmen from the Wahutu hunters, telling them that Prince Muikarago himself will direct the hunt. Straight to the hut of Muganda, head man of his father's hunters, goes the young prince with his message. We are...
After the hunters have been summoned, the young prince returns to his mother, who gives him his dancing costume for a rehearsal with the royal pages. To be a page is a privilege eagerly sought after by all growing boys of the Watusi. Meanwhile, replacing his father who is busy with the hunt, he has another duty, to supervise the ceremonial dance of the Wahutu farmers, subjects of the Watusi nobility. This dance occurs at planting time each year. High into the air go the crude hoes of the workers who wear a ceremonial garb that represents the green foliage of growing crops. This is an occasion of fun to all concerned. Now the young prince calls for the second stage of the ceremonial, with the dancers arranged in two long rows. With the added duty of supervising the whole men's dance, Prince Kanamogiri is late for his part in the dance of the king's pages. Chief Rurasiri, the court's teacher of traditional dances, brusquely orders the prince to hurry. An attendant quickly helps him on with the ceremonial skirt, bead necklaces, and headdress of banana fibers. There is great competition for a place among the king's pages who spend four years at the royal court. The Wahutu servants, having finished their dancing, now wait while their comrades bring on a hollowed log vessel and jars of fermented honey and milk for the drinking that will end the festivities. In his father's absence, the young prince must supervise this also, a duty for which the dancing master excuses him. The Wahutu have their own type of drinking straws, large hollow reeds which have been set all about the vessel of milk and honey. The young prince gives the signal. pages at rest from their dancing are thoroughly enjoying the affair. Having acted for his father, the young prince rejoins his companions and seems to share in their amusement at the antics of the servant farmers. A little later as he sets off for home, the chant of the returning leopard hunters comes to him from the distance. Eagerly, he looks to see whether the hunt has been successful. Then, dropping his ceremonial robes, he dashes off to join his father and the party. The hunt has indeed been a success. After an affectionate greeting, the prince proudly exhibits the quarry. With delight, the young prince examines the dead leopard, no longer a menace to the precious herds. Finally, evening comes, and the day's routine is ended with the washing of the feet by a household servant. The prince's mother tenderly places the young daughter in her bed, a bed built into one side of the house, a bed of reed mats, closed off from the night air by a hand-decorated curtain of woven reeds. The young prince, too, is ready for rest upon his bed of mats after a fond good night from his mother. The light, dry reeds blazing on the clay hearth are carried out, and night falls upon the royal Watusi household. <laughs> 